Hi and welcome. Now in this module, we're gonna take a look at the concept of exposure because that's what a photograph is. You are literally exposing the inside of your camera to the light and that process captures a photograph. And all cameras work exactly the same way. Right from my very first film camera through to my first DSLR camera and now my current mirrorless camera that a processor capturing that photograph has remained the same and it's never gonna change. So the word photography, now that's quite interesting because that is derived from two Greek words, the Greek word for light and the Greek word for drawing or painting with lines. So phos, graphy, morphed into photography. And that's what you're doing. You, when you capture a photograph, you're painting with light. How exciting is that? Now, the word camera comes from the Latin term camera obscura. Now let me explain all about camera obscura and when I do, you'll see how easy it is that process of capturing a photograph is really simple. So what is camera obscura then? Well, camera obscura is a dark chamber, a dark structure. So imagine some sort of chamber or structure that's completely dark inside. And if you put a small hole in one of the surfaces, light will pass through that hole and be captured onto the surface facing the hole. Now, as well as that, the strange phenomenon is that whatever is outside the chamber or structure, the whatever scene is outside, whatever location you're in, that is also captured through the hole and is projected onto the surface inside the dark chamber. It sounds like a bit of witchcraft, doesn't it? But that's what happens. Now, I can't explain why that happens. It's a phenomenon. But as I say, whatever is outside the structure, whatever scene, or even a portrait, it doesn't really matter, whatever is in front of that hole external to the chamber, actually finds its way into the chamber and is then projected onto the surface facing the hole. And that's brilliant, isn't it? Now, centuries ago, artists used to use this technique to create wonderful artwork. They would pop out into the countryside, erect a structure, go inside the structure, close the door, open a little latch to let the light flood in. And of course, as the light flooded in, the scene from outside, that lovely, wonderful countryside scene, would sort of go through the hole and be projected onto the surface. And they would get their palette knives out or their oils and brushes, and they would create a piece of artwork. That's amazing, isn't it? Portrait artists used to use the same process indoors. Again, just erecting a simple structure and doing the same thing. Now over the years, some bright chap came along and thought, hey, if we put a piece of light sensitive paper inside this chamber, then we can do away with all the paints and the palette knives and the brushes. And that light sensitive paper would actually capture the image as it was penetrating through the hole and being reflected onto this light sensitive paper. And this was the very beginnings of photography. And obviously over the centuries, cameras existed somebody came along and said, hey, if we put a roll of light sensitive film, then we can take multiple images. And that process of how you capture a photograph all derives from camera obscura. So I've got another camera, which I made earlier, just to show you how simple that process is. So here is the chamber. In this case, it's a cardboard box. And on the front, there is a tube, a cardboard tube, and that's the lens or the hole, if you like, of camera obscura. And the light is just gonna pass through that tube and be captured in the back, in the chamber, in this case, this cardboard box. Let's look at a camera then, and we'll just see, honestly, how simple that process is and how it's never changed. So this is the dark chamber. The actual body of the camera would be the dark chamber. And if I just pop this lens off, we can see this is just the same as the tube, the cardboard tube on the cardboard box, except it's a bit fancier that, obviously. This lens allows me to make the hole inside bigger or smaller. So remember, it's a hollow tube. The light's just gonna pass through, just like in camera obscura, but I can make this hole, internal hole size, bigger or smaller. Now that's called aperture size. Now more about that later in a whole module based on aperture size, but that's what we can do. But essentially, it's a hollow tube where the light passes through. Now, when we get to the camera, if I just turn this round and we take a look here, then across here would be a roll of light sensitive film. 
So as the light entered into the camera when you press the shutter release button, just like opening the latch in the chamber of camera obscura, then the light would flood in and it would be captured on the light sensitive film. So if I just do that now, if I just press the shutter release button, there you go, you can see the light would now be flooding in and it would be captured on the light sensitive film. Now, the shutters are open, the shutters are closed. More on shutter speed later, because that length of time the shutter stays open is controllable by you. You can determine how long that stays open for, but more on that later in a future module. But that is how simple it is. So camera obscura is used when you take a photograph with your modern day camera. Now, obviously moving forward to a mirrorless camera or a DSLR camera, that process is exactly the same. However, there's no roll of film or light sensitive paper. We have a sensor that is sensitive to light. And it's the same type of thing really as the light sensitive paper or the light sensitive film. You take a photograph and then that is written to your memory card. It's, it's wonderful, isn't it? But the thing is that process of how that photograph is captured has always remained the same, camera obscura. So as we go forward, I'm gonna explain all about aperture sizes, shutter speeds, ISO, which is the sensitivity sensor, how you get creative with all those settings. But at least you know now, that simple process has never changed for centuries and it never will. And it's quite simple, isn't it? Okay, I'll see you in the next module.